Alrighty, welcome to another Vintage Cube Team Draft. Here on my channel, we have another treat, another 4v4. We've been actually firing more 4-on-4 four 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 Team Drafts recently, which is awesome. I, I like them more than 3-on-3s. Three the 3-on-3s three three are great, too. I'll get to the players in a second here, but I want to talk about this pick because it's an interesting one. There's no power. The best cards in this pack are Swords to Plowshares. Great card. Best removal spell in the cube. Prismatic Vista, probably the best land to first pick outside of like library or strip mine. It's the best fixing land because it's just all five colors with no work. And then Mind Twist. This card's awesome. I'm going to take Mind Twist here. And yeah, there's a lot of really good cards, but Mind Twist I find is just easy to splash. If you cast it, you often just win. Like you make them discard their whole hand or a bunch of their hand and uh, really good with acceleration. Mm, nice follow-up to Mind Twist here. I'm going to take Orcish Bowmasters, the standout card from Lord of the Rings. Just really good at punishing card draw, good against aggro, good against people trying to do unfair stuff. Just cheap, efficient, great, great combination. So this team draft, it's going to be myself, uh, Dan B, who has drafted on the server before, I don't know super well. Sandy Dog, love having the dog on my team. Sandy's a great, great kid. Um... And Gavin, Alpha Frog, actually, the creator of the server. So a good squad facing off against Abram, who you might recognize from the other drafts. Uh, another good kid, and uh, he, he's good at QB. I'm actually passing to him. Eli Cassis, of course, the champ. And Luis Salvato, another champ. So two very accomplished players. And uh, Timrod, one of the original drafters on the server. I've played against him many times on the server and at Grand Prix. Uh, so it's going to be a good battle today, and I'm really happy picking Mind Twist into Bowmasters, and not even passing anything good here. The next best card here is like Bone Crusher or Chandra, something along those lines. But I'm going to start with two black mid-range cards, which I like to do, and then follow it up with a Grief. Just Mono Disruption. I, I think that this deck is really good. You've actually seen me draft it a number of times, though. They usually don't start quite this uh, you know, dark-tinted, like uh, getting to take three monocolored cards in a row, no lands is kind of cool. There's also Verdant Catacombs, which... In the dark, I think, is competitive with Grief. Verdant is just a really good card, too. Just getting to uh, fix your mana at extremely low cost. I think you all know how much I care about that. But Grief is awesome. Um, you either pitch it if, you're, if you have a hand that's kind of slow and you need to do something early, in which case it's okay, or you cast it and it's good, and there's a lot of good combos with it, like Reanimate Grief is such an amazing combo, or Ephemerate. Passing a Verdant, a Crater Hoof, Walking Ballista, Temporal Mastery. I also know Abram likes drafting black. Something to always keep in mind, and one of the reasons I really like this server is we iterate a lot, right? We're doing so many drafts that you get to know what other people's habits are, including my own, which is part of why I try to vary my range some. But uh, getting to kind of get to the point where you can draft around what the other people are doing. I know Timrod actually likes drafting black as well, but of course... This is also cube. Sometimes you open a busted blue card or a solitude or whatever it may be, a Raghavan, and just get pushed into another color. Um, haven't passed anything outstanding. Passed that one pack with the Swords to Plowshares, Snap, uh, Snapcaster, and Prismatic Vista. Abram probably took Swords. Swords is a really good pick. Or Prismatic Vista. Abram also likes lands a lot, just mana-producing ones. And then passed like Restoration Angel... Uh, alongside Chandra and Bone Crusher. This pack has the only black card I'd consider is Ravenous Chupacabra, but I don't like it that much. I think I'd rather just take Badlands or Zeator's Proving Ground. And actually of these two, I actually think I like Badlands more. Untapped land plot is a lot better and getting access to green I don't think is a huge deal. All right, now there's Dark Confidant and Knight's Whisper. There's also Wheel of Fortune. To go with my Orcish Bowmasters. Ooh. Though the funny thing is, Wheel of Fortune's pretty bad with the rest of my cards. Mind twisting them, then wheeling is pointless. Gre same with Grief. Casting Wheel and trying to follow it up with Mind Twist is kind of weird. I think I just take Knight's Whisper. Knight's Whisper is reliable. Two mana, two cards. Good deal. You lose two life also. There's also Dark Confidant. I do like Dark Confidant a lot. It is a very strong card. It's actually got higher upside than Knight's Whisper. But Dark Confidant, I think, is generally worse against aggro decks and also worse if you end up with too high of a curve. There's also Questing Beast, which is a good card. Uh, Mizzy Mortars is fine. The Wheel of Fortune Orcish Bowmasters thing is tempting, but I think I should just take Knight's Whisper. All right, here we have Kaito Shizuki, which is kind of a reward for not 
delving into another color because Kaido's awesome. This is exactly the kind of card I like. Three mana, high impact on the game, good at grinding the opponent out. Really just good value card. I think I like it more than Glenelandra Archmage or Moldrifter. I'm going to try to zoom in on the cards a little more if you haven't noticed. So uh, we'll, we'll see. I guess I guess I, I could also consider moving the camera now that I'm thinking about that. Um, <laughs> well, we'll, 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 this will be an iterative process. Leave, leave, leave a comment if, uh, if you need to. Um, though I guess the cards appear in different places. In any case, there's also Black Cleave Cliffs, but I don't have a red card yet. So I think I'd rather just take the strong card. And there's Through the Breach, but I think Kaito is a lot safer than taking Breach. Okay. On the one hand, there's Balance, which is a strong card. It can be good with, like, Planeswalkers. It's not that good with Mind Twist or Grief or Night's Whispers, to be honest, or even Bowmaster. There's also Urza, which I just took a blue card, so Kaito Urza is not unreasonable. Memory Jar is actually kind of interesting because it does work with Bowmasters, just like Wheel does. The difference, though, is that Memory Jar you can crack at a time that is opportune, like... It's not an anti-combo with Mind Twist in the same way, because with Memory Jar, you can jar and then Mind Twist them, and the jar doesn't effectively give them cards. Um, I'll still just take Urza. I just think Memory Jar is kind of a weak card. Oh, wow. Look at that. I took Urza, and then I got past Winter Orb. So the combo here is Winter Orb says, as long as it's untapped, players can, can't untap more than one land a turn. And Urza it taps an artifact for blue. So you play Urza and then you use Urza to tap down the Winter Orb. The other cards I could consider are Red Blast, which is always a fine card, Teferi, Riftwing Cloudskate, Sacred Foundry, but I think Winter Orb is nice. Also, if my curve ends up kind of low, Winter Orb can be good. Wow, Snapcaster Wheel. There's just no respect for Snapcaster. I'll probably take it. I mean, Kroxa is tempting because Kroxa is good in this kind of deck and I have a Badlands, but Snapcaster, Night's Whisper is a start. I'm in black. I assume I'm going to pick up a couple removal spells and maybe a duress, maybe ponder, that sort of thing. I think I'd rather just take snappy here. Um, this pack is pretty mediocre. There's batter skull and sword of fire and ice as equipment, but I'm not really looking that good at that. I guess sword is kind of interesting with Urza. Urza is a way to generate a lot of mana and the sword even taps for one mana with Urza in play. There's also Bloodthirsty Adversary and Mana Morphos, but I'm not that keen on those. Relic is also kind of interesting. It works with Urza, and it's a good like little value card. I guess I'll just take the Sword. I don't know. Wow, Late Ledger Shredder. I guess I'm happy to take that. I like Walking Ballista too, especially with Urza generating mana, but I think Ledger Shredder is very good. It's just a two-mana play that does a lot for the game. I don't know. Temporal Mastery, I think, is worse than Shredder when it comes to blue cards. Don't love passing the colorless card uh, and taking the blue card because it's more likely Abram can play it, but I like where I'm at. I don't think Hanger Back is crazy here. I don't think passing Coggler or Survival matters. Ab Abram does not play green, and they're both green cards. And I think Braids is just too bad of a card. Though, eh, it, you know, if any deck can play Braids, it'd be this one, though I don't think I'm that likely to play it. Emery I don't think is very good, but... Screlve is not a card I anticipate even being able to use. I guess I could take Una's Prowler because this deck could certainly turn into Reanimator. Mm, I think I'm more likely to want to either hate or potentially play Emery. I guess I'll take Felidar or Guardian in case I get a Sahili or something. All right, good pack one. And, oh, there's an Ancestral Recall. It's like I took Snapcaster because I had the read. Not really, but I'm very happy taking Ancestral, passing... Passing some bangers. Birds is really good. Emrakul is really good. Skyclave Apparition is great. Oracle's great. So let's see. Bur Birds, Emrakul, Tinker, Skyclave, Oracle, Path, Spell Pierce, Jetmer's Guardian. Those that's eight already, not counting the Ancestral. Not counting Kaido the Dancing Shadow. I left that off, because that's the one I'm trying to wheel here. Yeah, there's a shot of Jan of Kaido wheeling. There's I mean, given that I'm interested in Kaido, Spell Pierce maybe like Path if I end up Esper. Yeah, definitely something could wheel. I really hope that I end up winning this draft or winning a match in this draft by ancestraling my opponent with uh, Orcish Bowmasters in play where you're just like nuggy with the Bowmasters. Um, so this pack has some cards I'm interested in for sure. Uh, it's got... Tide Hollow Sculler and Ephemerate if I wanted to go into Esper, but I don't really have the lands to do it. In fact, I don't even have a blue-black land yet. And I, I'm just looking at Ephemerate with 
uh, Urza, well, let's get this braids out of here. Urza, Grief, <laughs> Snapcaster, and Orcish Bowmasters. But honestly, I should just take uh, Retrofitter Foundry. I think this card is pretty busted. It's ba basically, it's one, two tap, make a one, one, then one tap, sack that one, one, make a one, one flying, then tap, sack that to make a four, four. But it's also sick with Urza. Because with Urza tapping for blue, you just generate a bunch of tokens that then tap for mana and it just goes off really quick. There's also a bunch of mediocre blue cards like Chart of Course, Memory Deluge, Murktide Regent. You know, Ephemerate, no one at the table really wants it except for one person usually, so there's a decent chance it wheels. Okay, this pack has an Entomb, but we're not really there. We have no reanimation cards or cards to reanimate, like big ones. It's got Volcanic, so I could have my Grixis lands, but I should just take Xander's Lounge over Volcanic at this point, because it's a blue-black land, so it's already playable. And with Xander's Lounge and Badlands, I could easily splash red, and because of Snapcaster Mage, I'm pretty interested in splashing red for cheap red spells. There's also Sneak, but I'm not there either. Whoever I passed Emrakul to, I guess I'm passing over to Timrod. Yeah, who, who knows what he's drafting? I don't know I don't know the drafting styles of Timrod or Dan B very well, so I can't really adjust there. And Cryptic's great, but my mana's already pretty bad right now, so I'm definitely taking Xander's Lounge. What's going to come back? Probably nothing. The two lands, Goldspan, Cryptic, and Tomb are all going to go. Sneak's going to go. Lanarelv's going to go. And maybe I'll get a Gideon or a Botanical Sanctum back. Yeah, all right. Whatever. Hmm. All right, well, this pack has the Gristlebrand that I could have maybe taken after Entomb, but I think I think just taking a consistent deck or going for a consistent deck is good. I'm probably just going to take Vamp here. I don't love Vamp in, like, kind of fair decks, but I have both Mind Twist and Ancestral Recall, so I already have two really busted targets to Vamp for. That seems good enough for me. Plus, Grief Pitching Vamp is a, is a legit way to use Vamp as well. And I also have Urza Winter Orb, so I have enough combos for Vamp that I think it's good. Oh, Polluted Delta. Yeah, I, I love Jace, and Jace is good with Ancestral and, and Night's Whisper. Less good with Mind Twist, because by the time you flip Jace, Mind Twist isn't usually that great. But Polluted Delta, I mean, come on. Just a three-color untapped land when my card quality is already super high. Yeah, I'm not I'm not passing that up. Hmm... Not into Tularean Academy. I am into Spellseeker. Spellseeker gets me Ancestral Recall, Vamp, Night's Whisper, and Mind Twist. Good enough for me. I, I don't mind the days, but this is this is the situation where you want a Spellseeker. So here there's Custody Lich. Five mana, four two. They sack a creature, you become the monarch. It's a good card. Kind of more interested in Brainstorm. I have Snapcaster Mage to combo with Brainstorm. Ledger Shredder is good with Cantrips. I have Shuffling in Polluted Delta and Spellseeker, and Urza if I need to, and I have a uh, a lot of good low curve stuff. I think I should just take Brainstorm. It's so much safer. I've also just been not that impressed with Custody Lich in general. Ooh, could we lure us? We can lure us here. I can replay Retrofitter and Winter Orb, but that's just whatever. What I really am interested in is replaying Ledger Shredder, Snapcaster, Orcish Bowmasters. We're not companioning Lurus, but just casting Lurus is it can be really good. Okay, Kaito Wield. So did Vampire Hexmage. So did Spell Pierce and Jetmere's Gardens and Body Double. Wow. Okay. Some people took some cards I did not expect them to take. But that is cube. Sometimes people are looking for a specific card. I really like Kaito Dancing Shadow. Uh, so four mana, three loyalty, plus one, pass five creature, can attack or block to your next turn. So it's just removal that way. Zero draw card is great. Minus two, make a two, two with death touch that drains for two and it leaves the battlefield. But the kicker is whenever one of your creatures hits them, you can bounce it to get an extra activation out of Kaito. I've got some good creatures to bounce, like bouncing an Orcish Bowmasters or a Spellseeker. Like imagine I go a Spellseeker into something, they play a card. I go Kaito, plus one, make it so your creature can't block, attack a Spellseeker, bounce it, activate Kaito again. Great. Um, do I want a Murktide here or do I want a Memory Deluge? I don't like Memory Deluge very much. I think I'm a little more likely to want a Murktide. I, I think they're both kind of weak. Oh, wow. Lanor Elves Wield. I'm surprised by that. I think, I think I might take... I don't care about passing Botanical Sanctum. It's not that good. Gum Bombardment's not that good either. I guess I'm going to take Inkwell because, no, I should just hate Lano or Elves. Inkwell for, Tinker for Inkwell is just not a strong strategy. So uh, I really don't mind. 
them having the option. Whereas if Tim is just playing green, then passing a Lennar Robes is pretty bad. Lennar Robes is a very high pickable card. All right, well, now I'm passing a green card because I can't help it. But I'll take either channeler. It's a fine card. Oh, Talisman of Dominance wield? Very nice. I'll, I will take that. That is a, a decent card. Ephemerate didn't wheel. I guess the white weenie players really do like Ephemerate. All right. Um, I don't have any white fixing. Soul Herder would be good in this deck. Now I'll take Masker Worm. There, there's matchups where I'd want to just put Masker Worm in my deck to tutor four, I think. All right, well, this deck's looking great. Three good lands. Well, I guess the bad lands actually doesn't technically do anything. Oh, and there's a Mox Ruby and a Time Walk. Okay, well, I'm taking Time Walk and passing Mox Ruby. Ah, opening two pieces of power in a team draft. Brutal. It, it, I actually am... It's not quite as simple as like, oh, you're complaining because you opened Time Walk. When I open a 10 out of 10 card and pass a 10 out of 10 card, the two teams each got a 10 out of 10 card. In fact, my the opposing team getting to second pick one of those is pretty good for them. It, it does so happen that Time Walk in a Spellseeker Snapcaster deck is pretty busted, so I think this deck's going to end up absurdly good. But that's separate, right? Imagine if you remove these two cards from the pack and I got to take the next best card, which actually isn't that good. It's like Ancient Tomb. Yeah, it would still be pretty close, but whatever. I'm going to pass Abram a Mox, but I think Time Walk is just busted. Oh, I was really hoping to see Baleful Strix. There's also Toxic Deluge, and that's actually a really close pick. We're not going to wheel either one. They're both too good. And this pack is all red and green cards, so a lot of people are going to not have cards to pick out of this pack. So on the one hand, Deluge is interesting because I'm a little short on removal. I have Bowmasters. I have Kaito. That's about it. Either Channeler to Bounce. But on the other hand, Baleful Strix works with Lurus really well. You get to replay it from your graveyard. Uh, it works with Kaito really well. You get to bounce it, or not that Kaito, this Kaito. Bounce it to get extra Kaito activations, and it works with Urza. Yeah, Baleful Strix is too good for this deck. All right, I, I've got to take it. I really would like to pick up a little bit of removal. Well, it's not going to be this pack. Force of Negation is just too strong to pass. It's perfect for this deck. It's just a really good card. It just really cuts into any non-aggressive deck's chances of winning because... They just tap out for a play on turn four, turn five, and you could counter it for zero mana. You're down a card, but this deck is not going to have a problem making that card up, and I have a high blue count. Wouldn't have minded a collective brutality, but we're, we're okay without it. Um, oh, Ragavan? Well, there's that Ragavan. There's also a Preordain. So how good is Ragavan? I do have three red sources. So I'd, I'd basically end up on Ragavan with like four or five red sources maybe versus preordain and what preordain does is it draw it just makes my deck cast ancestral recall and time walk more consistently i mean those are great things i think i just got to take ragavan for two reasons one it's a strong card like it's gonna make my deck better i think if it was just that preordain would actually make this deck better than ragavan but this is a team draft and i'm passing to abram who just took mox ruby and ragavan is a busted card so i think i'm supposed to take ragavan here would like to pick up a little more fixing, and I already have tons of playables, and I don't think Consecrated Sphinx is like that special. So I'm going to take Spire Bluff Canal. I want to cast my Ragavan, passing Absent and Consecrated Sphinx, whatever. Oh, there we go. Dismember is perfect. Now I feel a lot less bad about that Toxic Deluge going. I love Dismember. It's just such a good, efficient spell. Can't get it with Spellseeker, sadly, but it's good with everything else I've got going here. Would have been nice to pick up a reanimate. I would still take that card pretty highly, but I guess I'm probably not going to get a seventh pick reanimate. Oh, there's Sahili to go with that Felidor Guardian, but with no white fixing, I don't think I need to do that. This deck is really good already. I think I just take Bribery. If you play against a green opponent, Bribery is very strong. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Passing Pack Rat, passing Rafelos and Green Sun Zenith. It seems like green's open, but. Don't you dare go to the comments and say that I should have been drafting green. No, this deck is much better than any green deck. Uh, <laughs> oh, I love Mana Leak. I love Dothy Voidwalker, too. This card's pretty messed up. Just two mana, three, two, unblockable. Already good. Can't block, though. But also, it it's a permanent Leyland of the Void while it's in play, so your opponent can't do any graveyard stuff. And when you do something like counter one of their spells or make them discard a card with, like, Grief, you get to cast that spell. Like, you can just play Dothy Voidwalker then Mind Twister, grief them, and all of a sudden just play something busted. That said, Mana Leak with Snapcaster, Spellseeker, and also just Mana Leak's a great card. 
Okay. This is 25 cards. I have to cut a couple cards here. Maybe Ether Channeler. I'm a, still a little low on disruption, so Ether Channeler is something I I might want. But I guess I do have. I did pick up a Dismember. I could also maybe play like 16 lands. Oh, Lier Wield. So Lier is sick with Time Walk, Dismember, Ancestral, Brainstorm. Not good with Mana Leak or Force Negation, because remember, Lier says spells can't be countered. Uh, ancient Tomb Wield, oddly enough. This isn't really an Ancient Tomb deck, but passing Ancient Tomb is a little dubious with Kaito, Mind Twist, and Bribery in my deck. And Retrofitter Foundry and Urza and Grief. Spellseeker, Lurus. Um, I actually think I will take Ancient Tomb. I don't know. That's pretty close. I actually don't know what the pick is there. I'll take Graveyard Trespasser. I know Abram loves Grad Dragon's Rage Channeler, but what can you do? I passed a really late uh, Pestermite, so let's just take Kiki because the rest of these cards I think are kind of mediocre. Guess I'll take Grave Titan. I just I did take an Ancient Tomb, and Grave Titan's kind of nice. There's also a bunch of random uh, green cards there. Unexpectedly Absence, the only really good card out of that pack. Do I want this Ancient Tomb? I think the Raghavan's going to be fine. I can play Raghavan with zero mountains, and this I think it would work fine. You just draw it sometimes, and it's good. With Ancient Tomb and Talisman, this Grave Titan could get in there. Yeah, I think Lear is good, but Grave Titan is like comparable with Lear in terms of what it does. And uh, Ancient Tomb is, I think, a pretty messed up card. It's just sometimes you just draw this card like, and you play it, you know, turn two Ether Channel or turn three Urza or whatever. It's just Time Walk, which I also have, by the way. Uh, yeah, I'll take the Salt Monolith. I don't really care about passing that. Yeah, no one else at the table wants the Healy Ride because I'm the one with the Felidar Guardian. All right, well, this deck's great, but uh, well, let's check in. Let's build the deck, check out our teammates' decks, and uh, see how this goes. Already, whoop, I was already challenged. Uh, this is my deck. This deck is busted. I mean, I opened Ancestral and Time Walk, and uh, also my colors were open in two of the better colors. I like blue and black are both great. Ended up on 16 lands. Just those four sources for Raghavan seemed pretty free. Cut Luris, Ether Channeler, and Murktide. Just, they seem like my three weakest cards. I, I like using my graveyard. I don't need a finisher, so Merc Tito's out. Chandler's just the lowest power level card, and Luris didn't have that many things to bring back, so this is where I ended up. Um, Alpha Frog is red-green with Black Lotus, which is nice. Uh, just a red-green mid-range, you know, with some good ramp stuff. Goldspan Dragon, Wheel of Fortune. Lotus Underworld Breach, Wheel of Fortune can do some cool stuff, so... Solid deck, and uh, Sandy Dog is actually not mono white, it's mono red with the one ring. Uh, Skull Clamp, GTA, Smuggler's Copter, some good stuff. So I don't know what our fourth teammate's deck is because he did not post it. And I'm playing against Ely Cassis and will keep this opening hand. This hand is solid. Ancient Tomb, that would be a card here. Well, Shell Dock is good against me. I'm going to get to 20 cards in deck and... It's a gr grindy matchup, so Shell Duck isn't bad. Um, I don't really feel the need to grief him right here. He's playing blue. I have all the busted blue cards. <laughs> we'll see. If he plays a ramp spell, oh, chart, of course. Yeah, that's still... I'm not feeling like pitching Baleful Strix or Mind Twist. I'm certainly not going to pitch Mind Twist. So I, I could pitch Baleful Strix to grief, but that doesn't seem great. Discarded a fast bond. All right, what is Ely up to over there? Where's my island? Um, is this a good place for time walk? Yeah, why not? Seems like it is fine. If I draw Ancient Tomb, I could get up to some nonsense. And even if I don't, I can like Talisman into Baleful Strix, which I think is a decent place to be. And then next turn, either Bribery or Mind Twist or Grief. <laughs> Got some options. Against blue-green, I imagine bribery is going to be great. So we'll see what he does. Okay, he taps out. I like that. Tap out for thirst. It's going to be at seven cards. So if I draw a black card, I'm kind of interested in going uh, mind twist you for four and then pitch cast grief afterwards. 
that seems like a pretty reasonable play to me. So I'm going to see how that goes. He discarded Pack Rat and Woe Strider. Oh, right. That's going to hurt against Mind Twist. That's for sure. Uh, didn't draw a black card. We're still just going to go Mind Twist, though. Mind Twist you for four. Hopefully mess up your plans. Hopefully don't get dazed. All right, discarded. So I got Courser, Gaia's Cradle, Necromancy, Jace. Okay. Mr. Cassis, always up to uh, your Sultai tricks. Um, hold on, I, I want to adjust something. Apologies if I'm throwing things off. My mic went way higher. All right. I'm sorry if the beginning of this video was much louder. It's going to get turned down here. So you can adjust your volume as needed, but I just saw that it was spiking a little too much. Okay. Uh, has black mana and is it going to reanimate something? Courser, Jace, Woe Strider? I don't know. Reanimate Jace. Solid play. Because next turn Jace can flip and reanimate again. Mm, let's go Bribery and Xander's Lounge here. This is going to let him shell dock. Oh, there's a Crater Hoof, an Omnath, Ulamog, Mox Diamond, Fourth Year Lingus, Survive so Triumph, Survival, Through the Breach. Um, I mean, Ulamog seems like it's probably pretty good here. Crater Hoof will not do enough to kill him. Yeah, let's just get Ulamog. Play Xander's Lounge. He is going to get to Sheldock here, which is a little scary, but I just have to hope whatever he Sheldocks can't beat an Ulamog. Next turn, I'm on... I guess I can play Urza Grief in the same turn. I don't I don't, I don't. know how likely it is that Grief's going to have an impact on this game. I, I wonder if I should have... I don't think I was supposed to pitch Baleful Strix to cast it earlier, but who knows. Okay, so he's going to take his turn. Draw to 21. Jace to 20. So Ulamog's lethal. Ulamog gets to attack, though I obviously don't think that's like super relevant. Oh, Caracas. All right, that's an unfortunate. So I'm gonna get Ulamogged instead. Because he's gonna reanimate Ulamog maybe? Well, that may or may not work, though he does also get to Sheldock here, so it's pretty rough. Oh, he didn't discard the Ulamog, Never mind. he discarded uh, Mox Diamond. Okay, so. I didn't even see what he jaced, but I guess it's probably reanimate. Yeah, reanimate into Courser. He already played a land though. He's got Shell Dock up. Is he gonna Shell Dock here? He does not Shell Dock. Um, so I guess I can play Urza Grief without. Uh, I don't need the Baleful Strix mana. Well, I think I'd rather play Urza first. I have the mana up for Kaito if I need to. Cast Grief. Okay, get the Ulamog. <laughs> yep. And I guess at this point attack Jace here. And hope that the Shell Dock isn't too busted. I don't really don't really know what's what's gonna go on here. Okay, here's Sheldock. No Emrakuls, please. Phew, the other Ulamog? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. This is annoying. Well, note to self, don't uh, don't bribery a legend. Bribery is still very good against him, but it does get a bit worse when briberying a legend doesn't do much. Um, so what's my best out here? Taking a look at my deck. I don't have a way to kill Ulamog, but I do want to maybe set up some sort of Snapcaster turn. Snapcaster time walk nonsense, so I'm going to keep my creatures. I guess actually I needed to keep the Talisman to make Construct into a 2-2, but sure. So this is until your next turn. Sheldock Ulamog, huh? Okay. 
I still don't feel too bad about this matchup, but Sheldock is going to be a problem. The rest of his deck does not seem nearly on par with mine, but obviously when you get Sheldock there, that's pretty rough. I did say Sheldock was going to be a problem. Letter Shredder's not going to do much here. I think I'm dead. I don't really even see the point in playing a Kaito here. Okay. Ah, uh, so big stuff. I guess Graveyard Trespasser is probably worth it. I do like the Winter Orb still. I like Ragavan, Grief, Grave... Grave Titan might be a little worse because I'm not trying to go as big here. And I'm trying to get under him a little more. Braids could also be kind of sick. It's bad against Corsair. But... Uh, it's bad against Caracas. I don't want a board and card that just gets bounced by Caracas. Ether Channeler might actually be good. Can bounce a reanimated Ulamog of various sorts. <laughs> I think Bowmasters is fine. I might just cut Retrofitter Foundry. Even though I'm, I'll still keep the Urza. Retrofitter is not the kind of game. No, that's not. That's not what we're in for against Ely here. All right. Um, let me see. What does my teammate have? Um, this is Dan B's deck. Mono Blue, Mole Drifter, Consecrated Sphinx, Force of Will, High Tide, Lotus Bloom, two Moxes. This is a powerful draft. Time Warp, Tinker, Ugin, Bull, Cecilia, Cryptic. Oh yeah, this deck's sick. I don't know why all the cards are blanked out, but this deck is pretty sick. All right. So, yeah, that was unfortunate. I don't really have a way to interact with Sheldock, so I guess I just have to try to win before Sheldock happens, which is going to be hard, but also just hope he doesn't hit literally Ulamog off Sheldock. There's a lot he could have hit that would not have uh, <laughs> that would not have won the game there. All right, I would like to play first. Uh, I will keep this hand. I'm probably... Just gonna go Delta into Xander's Lounge and uh, play a turn two Ledger Shredder. I could get like Badlands and Vamp for Ancestral Recall, but I don't think that that's a good play here. I think I would rather just put something on the board that can maybe start some pressure and then. If I want at some point, I probably want to try to set up Vamp for Time Walk the turn after I cast Kaito the Dancing Shadow. Something along those lines is more what I'm thinking. Mm, Night's Whisper's interesting. Um, let's just, do I want an Ether Channeler? <laughs> this feels like a, this feels like a big inflection point. Oh, I actually think it's pretty easy to Ether Channeler here, Never mind. Because I have Kaito, so there's a good chance I'll get to bounce the Ether Channeler with Kaito here. Oh, Red Blast the Ether Channeler. Okay. That's fine with me. I mean, obviously he got to spend his turn two to cancel my turn three, but that's a good Red Blast. Ooh, Gaia's Cradle. That's not a great play. Does not tap for mana right now. Dancing Shadow. Uh, draw a card. Attack. I'll bounce this and I'm going to make a drone here. And then I think next turn I go Ledger Shredder. Oh, he drew the forest so he can play something here. Ah, that was, that was lucky. <laughs> Otherwise, he wasn't going to be able to play anything. Next turn, my plan is to go Ledger Shredder, Vamp, Triggering Shredder to get, get Time Walk. Oh. That's a little different. Um, no, I actually still think I like doing that. Ledger Shredder. Vamp. Oh. <laughs> uh, awkward. Uh, I guess I'm going to get Snapcaster now. Let's uh, draw a card. Land. Time walk. <laughs> I mean, who needs vamp, right? 
Snapcaster seems better than Ancestral to me with Kaito and all those things. Uh, I'm not going to return the draw now. I don't think I want to do that. Draw. Mm. Let's draw a card first here with Kaito. Let's go Snapcaster Mage. Into Time Walk here. Okay, well, that's kind of what I was hoping to have have get going here. Uh, he hasn't even seen the Ancestral. He doesn't even know I have Ancestral. I think Winter Orb's also going to do some real good work against him. Graveyard Trespasser is probably my weakest card, but I really don't want to be vulnerable to chart a course, discard, you know, a big creature with Necromancy and reanimate in his deck. So, all right. Let's hope to we draw it. I mean, obviously the busted blue cards are good. Oh, Ragavan is good. All right. So he has Red Blast, so let's not run Ancestral into Red Blast. What this hand needs to draw, you know, after I Ancestral, <laughs> after I draw a bunch of cards, is uh, just a little bit of acceleration. Like I have Ancient Tomb and Talisman to get this uh, bribery out ahead of schedule, or Ragavan. I could draw Badlands or Polluted Delta or Spire Bluff, maybe dash a turn to Ragavan, and if I get one treasure off it, then turn four bribery is a lot. A lot better. Also, knowing he's got Crater Hoof in deck means I might want to try to set up a bribery when I have like two creatures out, in which case it'll probably be lethal, but we'll see. He just mulliganed to five, so that's going to be tough. Okay. Um, I don't think he has Spell Pierce. I guess I'm probably going to upkeep Ancestral here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, I have Ancestral and Time Walk. <laughs> uh, in case you were wondering. <laughs> Alright, well I didn't draw a red source, but I drew an Ancient Tomb, so that's pretty good. Um, red would still be nice here. I'm at 10 cards, so I'm probably going to have to discard here. Oh, Urza. Oh, man, I was going to play Bowmasters this turn. I think I have to go Ancient Tomb Winter Orb. Because if I play Bowmasters this turn, my next turn is not nearly as good. Yeah. It's a weird play, but I think it sets up Urza really nicely. On the other hand, uh, I guess I'm just going to discard Ragavan. Yeah. On the other hand, if he leaves up Red Blast, maybe this play is kind of bad. I, I guess we'll see what he does. This does change. It makes it like it makes casting something like Charter Course a lot more painful for him. The one thing I don't like about this line, which I'm kind of second guessing myself a little bit here, is I had Ancestral Recall and Snap Ancestral, so I'm drawing so many more cards. So having the card Winter Orb in play is a lot worse for me than it is for him, because I have a lot more stuff to do with my mana. That said, if I do land the Urza, it is much better. Balance, okay. So I discard three cards. Uh, so I'm going to keep Urza Island, Urza, Bribery, Snapcaster. Yeah, that's fine. That, that actually I don't, I don't mind too much. Caracas. Okay. Well, I mean, he can Caracas my Urza, but I don't think that's like a huge deal. Because I'm going to get to Bribery soon enough here. I know I can't get a Legend, but Urza. And past the turn, he's going to bounce it. So I'm actually going to tap the Winter Orb for blue. Pass. So he gets to untap all his lands, but I also get to untap all of mine, which I think is better. And he can't bounce Urza too many times here. All right, I guess I'm glad I went with this line because otherwise the Bowmaster would have just died to the balance anyway. Whoa, Strider, okay. Whoa, and no land. Oh, great. Land, land for me, okay. I could just bribe here. I could also play Urza. Playing Urza seems pretty good. 
Because Julie, chill out. Chill out. The dog. Got the dog a new dog bed, and she wants to break it in there. Because now I get another token, and now I'm going to pass. Hey, Jules. Chill. <laughs> uh, and end of turn, get to tap down the winter orb to Snapcaster Ancestral. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ancestral me. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's worth brainstorming too, probably. Let's put back Kaito's draw. He's letting me untap with Urza. Um, I mean, I have this game. I have this game locked down every conceivable angle. To be honest, let's see if I bribery tapping those four. I mean, I guess talisman is kind of not free, but I think worth playing. Then I go bribery, tap, 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 tap. Oh, I guess I could have just briberied Crater Hoof. But if Crater Hoof's not in his hand, then that would have been a little tr trickier. Okay, so Crater Hoof now. Is that still lethal? Crater Hoof gives plus five, plus five. So that's 10, 17, plus six, 23, minus three. No, he gets to bounce the Urza. Um, that's actually still fine. Let's just get Crater Hoof. I guess I could have left some of my dorks untapped. Attack. I'm just going to bounce Urza. Do I want to tap Winter Orb? I don't really think so. I think this is fine. I'll let him keep one land untapped here. It goes to three and I have Mana Leak up. Yeah, I think we're going to be just fine here. Mm -hmm. And I have a 5-5, five five, some 4-4s. Four What's he going to do? Cast another balance. <laughs> and I have Mana Leak up just to stop anything. All right. Round one in the books. Sheldock got us game one, but then the busted cards worked the rest of the games. Let's see how my teammates are doing and get ready for round two. Already time for round two. Battling against Abram here, who's on mono white. Yeah, I will keep this hand. I do have to watch out for uh, Ravages of War, Armageddon, and all that. Um, pass the turn. Hmm, Pluto Delta. Uh, I do have a brainstorm, so I have to consider if I want to shuffle, uh, use my shuffle effect. But I think getting the uh, Xander's Lounge is probably worth it. Because that way I don't draw a top land later. So I think that's good. Let's just get this. Do you want to get Baleful Strix out? Let's actually get Ledger Shredder out. I don't really need to get Baleful Strix out because... Oh, getting manatized? Sure. Um, I didn't have anything I had to block. It's not like I was going to block the Thraben Inspector. Okay. Manatide into White Plume is going to be tough. All right. I need to find a time walk fast here. So what I think I'm going to do is go Spell Seeker into Time Walk. And then next turn... Next turn, Baleful Strix time walk. I hope he doesn't Armageddon this turn. That would be pretty bad for me. Okay, two plus one plus one counters on the white plume. Oh, and a Thraben. Sure. Yeah, I am going to take six, I guess. Go to 11. Don't really want to pass here. Don't get in me, please. All right, I mean... That's just a hand I'm not going to beat. So, oh, there's the force of negation. Ah, all right. Well, I lost game one again to some unfortunate stuff. I think Channeler's good. I think the Winter Orb's really bad. Uh, don't know about Mask Orb. Retrofitter Foundry, I think, is still probably fine. Regent, I'm not a big fan of. Is there anything else? I mean, I think Mind Twist is still okay. Bribery is probably not great. Sword of Fire Ice. I might just want Graveyard Trespasser. 
Or maybe Luris. Actually, Luris seems kind of nice at replaying some of the cheaper stuff. I just want a cheaper spell, basically. All right, I would like to play first. Oh yeah, this hand is great. Uh, what do I do with this hand? Hmm. Do I want a vamp turn one for ancestral? Yeah, probably. And then go turn two delta go and uh, set up mana leak. Oh, I guess if he's gonna mana tithe my vamp, that's fine. Let's get ancestral recall. Play Pluto Delta and pass. And then now I have Mana Leak, your turn two, play into Ancestral turn three, depending on what goes on. All right. Just get a basic island here. And Ancestral. Seems like that can't really go wrong. Did not. Now I go land, Talisman, can't get Mana Tithed. And then have mana leak up still for next turn and then I can play grief and just kind of go from there containment priest sure uh, that one I don't I don't really have anything that that matters for so I don't really don't want to get white plumed or Adeline here let's just mana leak that that's the one ad that's the altar art Adeline the one for makes a token etc etc all right so land would still be pretty good here do I alt cast grief? Do I cast Kaito? I think I just cast grief. Miss a land drop, but this it's gotta make it so his next turn is just not that good. Gideon, Resto, Sword of Body and Mind. Oh uh, yeah, this is not too bad. Alright. Let's just take the Gideon ally of Zendikar and then pass. And then I have Kaito bounce grief next turn potentially. Also, uh Resto is pretty bad or with a containment priest in play. I mean, it just doesn't do anything. Oh, Scrub was the draw, so his hand is now Resto Usher of the Fallen, and he's not going to attack. Scrub can't block though, so right now Kaito is not able to be blocked. So do I want a Spell Seeker Time Walk? I kind of think I don't this turn, because what I do here, if I go Kaito Dancing Shadow, yeah, look, Kaito Dancing Shadow, Attack, can't block. Mm. No, you still can't block. Um, okay, bounced grief. Let's. Um, plus one, the containment priest. And then I played a land this turn, so let's just make an idiot and pass. And then I have Dismember up if uh, they want to equip Sword. Okay, no, no equips. Draw. Force Negation gives me a little bit of backup against something like Resto. So what happens if I attack with the Drone? Toxic 1 in Hexproof? That doesn't do much. I guess he could block with Containment Priest and... Resto it. Could also just cast grief. He cast resto in response. So let's let's not do that yet. Yeah, let's just attack with the drone token and see what the what the deal is. Block. Okay. Offer the trade. Oh, okay, sure. Let's do that. Um. Just draw a card then. Luris. I don't have anything to replay now. Let's go Spell Seeker into Time Walk. And if he drew Mana Tithe as the draw, then so be it. Alright, didn't didn't do that. I was, was kind of hoping to draw a land. Alright, so now I draw on the land. So now I can cast Grief, cast Resto in response. I plus with Kaito. Or I could just dismember the Skrelv. Oh yeah, that sounds really good. So let's go land, cast grief. And that induces the resto, I would assume. 
Okay, in response, dismember Skrell, paying black one, and then I guess I'll save one life by doing that. Dismember Skrell. Yeah, this is going to work out really well, because now Grief looks at the hand. Gideon Jura and Usher of the Fallen. Uh, actually, I just take the Usher here. Plus one, Resto can't attack or block, and now I can attack with Spellseeker and then bounce it with Kaito. And then, I so said 14, let's just make another drone. Pass the turn, and then if uh, Abram draws a land, taps out for Gideon, I can just force of negation it. Okay, equipping sword. Yeah, that's fine. So it's pro, it's pro green and blue, but it's not gonna kill me. Raghavan doesn't do a whole lot here. So can't block either of my creatures. Let's just draw a card here. So I can make a white bird is the thing. The, the ether channeler gives me a, a nice free blocker. So now I get to attack with these. And do I wanna block with, or do I wanna pull grief back to, to do that? Yeah, probably fine. And then cast grief. Look at your hand. It's Flicker Wisp and Gideon Jura. All right, I'll take Flicker Wisp, land, channeler, uh, create a 1 1 bird with flying. All right, and then I get to Kaito again. So I'll draw a card because I can't, I can't plus one Kaito on this anymore because it's pro blue. But Kaito Dancing Shadow, I've never seen it be this good. It is, it is just running up the score here. All right, chump with the bird token. They draw land for Gids, yeah. Force and negation that. And that just about ends the game. I guess if I draw a red, it literally ends the game. So I guess, um, yeah. I mean, I was gonna win this turn. I was gonna get to bounce Ether Channel and replay it. All right, well, I like that. Don't want bribery, no. Yeah, I like where I'm at. Sword of Fire and Ice, I don't think so. Force Negation, I think, is still good. Armageddon, multiple Gideons, that's enough. Sword of Body and Mind. I guess the Raghavan Splash could be bad, but I don't know. It's pretty, again, it's pretty free, and Raghavan's just such a good card. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have to keep this. He's going to mulligan, it looks like. This, this deck on the draw, for as busted as this deck is, and it is busted. I mean, this is one of the best decks I've drafted in these team cubes. I think, I don't know even what would be comparable. Um, oh, geez, that's annoying. <laughs> uh, this deck on the draw is a little slow. Like, not having any of the zero mana cards. I mean, I still stand by time walk over... Uh, over uh, Mox Ruby, but not having any Moxes does make things a little harder. Wasteland. Uh, that makes the Raghavan Splash a little less free. Oh, that's interesting. Um, let's just go Ledger Shredder, I think. Ledger Shredder is nice because it means that in order for him to attack, he's got to use Mother of Runes. And... If he plays two spells, though, that's not super likely. I could mess something up. Plus, there's just no guarantee he's going to play anything this turn, so I don't know that I want to leave up Mana Leak here. Feels like if I leave up Mana Leak and his play is attack with Usher, make a token, it's just, just really bad for me. So Raghavan is terrible. I wish it was literally anything else. Uh, what do I want to draw here? Honestly, I just want to draw Ancestor Recall like always. Okay. All right. Can't block it. Are you gonna make a token? Or are you gonna play something else? You're gonna make a token and then play a scrub. Okay. Oh, well, there's spell seeker. Man, this ancient tomb, as good as ancient tomb is in this deck, it's really sucking right here. Cause I can mind twist the two cards in hand. That leaves me in such an awkward spot. I could play nothing, but that seems horrible. Because Skrelv's now going to protect Mother of Runes. I could play Kaito 
If it makes a blue ninja, so it still would let me get attacked. Oh, man, I could spell seeker, but I don't have a one mana removal spell. Again, what am I going to get? If I spell seeker, I'd probably get vamp. Oh, uh, orcish. I guess. I guess I'd still just get ancestral. If this ancient tomb was any other land, it'd be so much better. It even gets wastelanded. Um. Guess I'm not taking tons and tons of damage. As painful as it is, maybe I just Kaito here. I kind of feel like this Mind Twist is just not, not gonna get the job done well. And there's no even way to play two spells. I guess I could Spellseeker Vamp and that triggers Ledger Shredder. And then, I assume I'm going to get my tomb wasted. Spellseeker and Vamp, it's just so bad. I guess I would get, I would get the Orcish idiot. Yeah, I guess that's where I'm at. Man, really, really, really brutal to how this worked out. But Vamp, Ledger Shredder. Okay, I'll discard Ragavan. I don't really see that one being good. And then let's get Orcish Bowmasters and pass the turn. I really don't want to attack for two here. Hard to imagine I'm not going to get Wastelanded here, but maybe not. If not, then maybe I've got something I can do because then I can go Kaito plus Bowmasters in the same turn. Okay, Hexproof can't be blocked by blue creatures, Toxic 1. Wasteland and sort of Light and Shadow. The double protection here is really, really screwing me. Uh, I guess sort of Light and Shadow is not like the end of the world if I get hit or anything. That at least is nice. So I can go Swamp, go. They equip Sword onto Usher of the Fallen. Orcish Bowmaster. See, the problem is Mother of Runes plus Skrelv is just such a brutal combination. I can also Snapcaster Vamp again, but vamping for like Dismember seems like it's going to be too slow. I think I'm going to lose here. It's such a shame. The White Plume into Geddon was just so brutal game one, and then... This game, it just was, ex that ancient tomb, I don't know, the whole thing was just awkward. Uh, how do I best get out of this? If I vamp, I get to trigger a letter shot. I'm at 11. If I vamp, I go to 9. I go 5. All right. I guess I just passed the turn here. I think I have outs, but they're slim. Slim indeed. Yeah, that gets equipped. That's fine. Certainly can't beat a single other good card from him. Mana Tither otherwise. Usher the Fallen. Oh, now it's pro white. So I can actually chump it now. Actually, whoa, he really messed up there. He can't target Usher of the Fallen with his pro protection creatures anymore. Oh. This actually, hold on. We have ourselves... Okay, so now he's going to move it back. So, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'll take three. That's not the end of the world, really. Okay. So now, let's see. I go Snapcaster Mage. I'm gonna go to six here. I'm gonna vamp. Let's draw off Ledger Shredder first. Urza. I kind of want to just discard Mana Leak at this point, I think. Yeah, I think so. And get Ancestral Recall, I believe. What does getting Time Walk do? Not much, right? I can't attack for nearly enough. All right, let's just get Ancestral. Uh, 
Uh, do I want to attack with Snapcaster Major Spellseeker? No, let's just pass. I've got a plan here. <laughs> uh, so pro white and black on that. So I'm going to target that hexproof from blue. Okay, can't be blocked by blue creatures. Sure. Then I'm going to move the sword. Um, let's play the bowmaster. Funk Master Flex here, and let's, I guess, ping the Usher. See how that works out. <laughs> so I've had this playing the whole time. I'm Ancestral Nabrum here. That's what's happening. <laughs> he is about to draw three cards, and I hope they're not good ones. Don't have mana tithe. Come on, please just don't have mana tithe. Um, honestly, swamp doesn't do much for me. Don't have swords either. All right, bowmaster, kill your mother runes. Bowmaster, kill your usher. Bowmaster, kill your scroll. <laughs> I mean, this was the play. Like, he gets three cards, but. I now have a board I can actually manage, and I'm actually going to get to Mind Twist here, <laughs> potentially. Let, let's see how this goes. <laughs> I, I was waiting on that. I wanted. To, I was curious how many people thought that was going to happen. When I didn't main phase Ancestral myself, that probably was a bit of a giveaway. But now that Human Warrior token can't even attack, because my Ledger Shredder will beat it up. All right, I mean, he's going to get to play something good. Yeah, sure, White Plume. Ah, is that good? If I draw Time Walk, I just win on the spot. And I'm, this gets me a blue mana off of... Uh, off of... Uh, for my for an initiative for Urza. All right, Grave Titan. Okay, so now I go land. Um, I guess I attack with the Ledger Shredder. Get the initiative. Okay. Get an island. So I can mind twist him down to one card. Or I can play Urza. I have a bunch of blockers. I'm just going to mind twist you. And hopefully get something good. Adeline, Plains, Gideon. All right. If you attack with the Human Warrior token, I will chump. If you move the sword, then I'll still definitely chump. And if you play two spells, Ledger Shredder triggers. All right. We are going to at some point run out of blue creatures to chump with here, but not for now. All right. Containment Priest, sure. F oh, Flicker Wisp. All right, that's going to Flicker Wisp the Ledger Shredder. Uh, Night's Whisper can get out of here. And that's going to kill it with Containment Priest. Yeah, that's a good play. That's going to be tr tricky. Okay. Oh, man. So after Mind Twisting, he still had all of that? Okay. Well, I guess I'm definitely scrying. So let's go Lost Well. Can I get a Time Walk? Kaito Dancing Shadow. I do like that. Okay, so so my next one is going to get a treasure. This is tough. I guess I'm not going to be able to afford to play Grave Titan, so I'm going to put Island on the bottom, put Kaito on top. Kaito Dancing Shadow. Plus one on that. Past the turn. Man, the Flicker Wisp Containment Priest. Oh, I thought I was going to win. Now I do not think I'm going to win. He had to have land, too. He had to, So I twisted him down to two cards, and then he drew and the, had the exact those three. Because now I get to... Oh, no. He drew another card. That's good. Oh. 
I'll ring that. Huh. Uh, sure, yeah, no, that, that, that makes sense. All right, I guess I block there and go to one. Yeah. I thought Ancestraling was going to get me the, 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 get me back in the game here, but, uh, just two peels in a row, and it is no longer the case. Now I move the sword, sure. Draw. And then I'm pretty much dead. I mean, I guess Kaido Shizuki into Time Walk isn't out. I could draw a card off that. I guess I just need to find Time Walk. Even then, I don't think I'm going to win, but... Force Negation, top card, it would have won me the game the first game for sure. I don't think this game forcing the O-Ring would have necessarily won me the game. Draw a card, yeah, all right. Well, the best we can do in two is two and one despite the brokenness of this deck, but uh, when your opponent peels in a really close game, then so be it. All righty, time for round three. That was a heartbreaking round two, but you know what? That, that's how the cookie crumbles. Uh, let's go ahead and play first, playing against Four color, just, you know, stuff, which is definitely a cube deck I've drafted many times. Uh, current team standings, uh, I am 1-1. One, one. Frog has finished all his matches. He's 2-1, so that makes us 3-2. Dan carrying the team at 2-0, so we're 5-2. And then Sandy was 0-1 last time I checked, so 5-3. Ooh, Talisman of Dominance is nice there. Don't need an Orcish Bowmaster's turn two. I can go turn three, probably just play Urza. Like I could play Spellseeker Ancestral, but Urza just puts more on the board. So I think that's gonna be better. Scavenging Ooze, huh? Sure. Um, yeah, so we're five and two. We need seven to win here. Also, uh, if I play Urza, especially now that I've drawn Kaito Shizuki, Maybe some sort of time walk is in order. Got to watch out for Dak Faden here. Oh, that's a Wood Elves. That is not a Dak Faden. And I like my matchup against anything that's not super fast. So, which my opponent's deck is now. It's got like Minsk and Boo, Dak Faden, uh, I don't know, random stuff like that. Mm, I'm probably just going to Ancestor myself here. Wow, might I cast Ragavan? Because I could go like Spellseek or Time Walk, but that doesn't seem that good. I could also play Kaito. What does Kaito accomplish? I could play Kaito Bowmasters. Actually, I kind of like that. Let's go, let's do Kaito and make a ninja. Play a Spire Bluff Canal and pass the turn. Leave up Orcish uh, Bowmasters. And now Spellseeker Time Walk is probably just better than Ancestral. Like if I'm getting a Kaito activation that's already plus one card. A card off time walk that's two so i'm only so i'm drawing one more off ancestral but time walk is also giving me access to six mana so that seems better and potentially a ragavan hit though i guess i don't know how it's getting past that scavenging news the bowmaster can kill the the wood elves here also if he plays minsk and boo i get to kill the the minsk oh uh, what are you going to kill with that that's my question can kill the construct, I guess. Could kill the ninja token. Can't kill the kaido. It's phased out. I'm probably gonna play bowmaster, regardless of which ability. Yeah, because either because my mana dork is gone. So let's just do this, and let's just ping. I could attack Vraska with the ninja token. So let's just ping the wood elf. That goes away. And plays a land. All right, that is not going to get the job done here. I don't think scavenging ooze versus the world is going to is going to work out. Um, let's attack first. Yeah. Let's go attack Braska. Attack two on and we're all point doing that. All right. Just nug Braska. Draw a card. Land. Yeah, let's go Spell Seeker. Just get 
time walk, time walk, and we're just going to play the Ragavan as well. Take the extra turn. Now, yeah, I'll trade up. I'll trade off Bowmasters for a Ragavan hit with all this mana up. Sounds fine. Okay. I don't think Bowmaster is necessarily going to do that much more. Ragavan, yeah, Trop, whatever. Uh, draw a card. Whiff, 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 huh? All right. Well, let's. Urza into. Ooh, Kaito? That works for me. All right. Uh, let's just plus it on the Scavenging Ooze, play Island and Pass. And now I have a Force of Negation up, which could. Stop most of the things that, that would be problematic. Two planeswalkers and a boatload of creatures. Obviously, you could pay like a glory bringer or some big haste creature. Maybe the kill, like glory bringer, for example, would kill Kaido the Dancing Shadow and like Urza. But barring that, I feel pretty good about this. Fracture Identity, no, I'm going to pass on that one. Oh, I didn't need to sack the treasure. That was stupid. <laughs> I could have just tapped it to Urza. Well, I, I think I think we're gonna be okay. Mm, let's go plus one. Yeah, ooze can't block. And then now, if he doesn't block spell seeker, actually, he's just completely screwed. Because I will be bouncing the spell seeker to get ancestral. I've never had Kite of the Dancing Shadow be this good <laughs> in a deck before. All right, let's draw a card. And before I draw a card with Kaido, let's go ahead and spell Seeker. Uh, I could get Mind Twist, I could get Ancestral. I, I don't think Mana Leak is it. And yeah, Mind Twist actually seems like it's probably best just to Mind Twist here. Custodial Lich and Steam Bits, yeah, those weren't doing anything. Plus one on Scavenging Ooze and play a land and pass the turn. It's going to need to peel something real good. Yeah, it did not. All right. Uh, four color. Don't, I definitely want the Winter Orb. Do I want Sword of Fire and Ice? Not against Dak Faden, really. I like the Bowmasters, obviously. Don't really need Trespasser. Braids is actually kind of interesting, but he's got a lot of random permanents. Like, Braids against Wood Elves is a really bad exchange. And I don't think Ether Channeler is going to be better than just firing it off here. All right. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, certainly a keepable hand, but, you know, not, not the most exciting. Hmm. Pass. Island wasn't exactly what I wanted, but I mean, Knight's Whisper is going to find us more action here. Sylvan Carrier, dude. Now I'll keep the Swamp for, uh, or sorry, Polluted Delta for shuffling because I don't really need mana. All right, no Dak, please. Or Minsk. Oh, Coercive Portal. Yeah, that one's okay. That one's less bad than the two cards I named. Vamp isn't terrible. I could win her orb, then vamp, but then I wouldn't have enough for Urza. Let's just Knight's Whisper. Oh, all right, well. Let's dash out Ragavan. Well, Ragavan is getting a little bit of action this game. Didn't do much before, but Jetmere's Garden, sure. So now I can vamp on upkeep uh, for Urza. And then play Winter Orb after Urza. So I think that's probably the play. Because Urza Winter Orb is a really good way to constrain the mana. So he's played an untapped land. I was going to get... Uh, that's a Talisman. Well, that makes the whole Urza plan a little worse, certainly. Um, yeah, I actually still like doing it, though. Against Course of Portal, it feels like... Uh, Getting Winter Orb down really mitigates a lot of the damage Portal does. All right, this time let's remember to 
tap the treasure instead of <laughs> instead of doing the other things instead of sacking it. All right, pass the turn, so it gets to ooze my graveyard. I don't care about that. There's nothing in it. Also, my hand is kind of bad, so like obviously ancestral would have been kind of appealing, but um, uh oh, black mana. No, okay, that's just scavenging. It was good. Um, Urza could ancestral me over the next couple turns. I have enough mana to do that, and then hopefully I find something else. It also uh, like it's constrained him for two mana this turn. Is Jetmere's Garden in hand? Right? Did I know about that somehow? Where did that even come from at this point? I, I don't know. Um, so that obviously... Oh, he doesn't have it in hand. That was exiled to Roglin. That's why I thought Jetmere's Garden. Anyways, uh, it does have a bunch of triumphs, though. But now if he casts a spell, he might not be able to cast another one too easily. Those carry Tid plus Talisman obviously does do a good amount of work here. I'm hoping to not get hit by Fractured Identity. That would be bad. Fractured Identity on Urza would just be a Uno reverse card on the, the whole Winter Orb deal. <laughs> but Fractured Identity is a really strong card. Oh, interesting. Okay. Killing Urza. Wow, the mana in this deck is definitely something. But I guess when you have three Triumphs and carry it, that obviously helps quite a bit. It doesn't attack, and now can eat the Urza for Raghavan purposes. Um, I will attack with the Construct, because then I can Kaito and draw. Let's go Kaito Shizuki. Let's just draw a card here. Ooh, a Bribery. Yeah, I am interested in that. I don't think there's any point in casting Raghavan. With a Urza out, or sorry, a Winter Orb out, it costs me mana permanently, effectively, and Raghavan is just not going to do anything this turn. All right. The good thing about them killing Urza with Murderous Rider is I no longer just lose straight up to Fracture Identity. Fracture Identity reversing the Urza would have been really bad. What is this? Oh, the greatest thief in the multiverse. I'm gonna steal my construct. Okay. It's a 3-3 three, three over there. Alright, let's see what bribery has to offer, shall we? And birds. Oh man, this winter orb is getting worse by the minute. It doesn't attack because of the rock I'm still sure. Okay. Um, I guess, do you want to draw first, or what, what would I change? Because I'm going to have to discard, I don't care about that, but we'll make, I'm not going to make a ninja, I'm going to draw, I think. Hopefully find a Bowmasters or something. Uh, let's just discard Xander's Lounge. With a Winter Orb in play, Xander's Lounge is horrendous. Let's bribe you. So, Fracture Identity, Minsk and Boo, Teferi, Vrosk are still in deck. Days up. Days. <laughs> yeah, days in that deck, huh? Um, oh, I could take the initiative and then play Raghavan as a blocker. I could Custody Lich. That doesn't sound very good. Scare of God against Scavenging News isn't, like, the most impressive. Obviously, getting Skydiver doesn't do anything, so... I have one creature in the graveyard, but he can DAC to fill up the graveyard, maybe. Mm -hmm. So I think it's either, or it's Leopold. Oh, Leopold stops DAC and Course of Portal. Yeah, let's just get Leopold. Sounds pretty good. And I don't think. Um, Kaito's going to get attacked here. What is, does playing Raghavan prevent that? I could chump with Raghavan. I don't really want to chump with Raghavan. Let's just pass. All it does is grow scavenging use anyway. Yeah, this winter orb is messing me up for sure. But I think, I think that's okay. 
So what do I have to be worried about? Fracture Identity, Minsk and Boo, Vraska are all cards that would concern me. Okay, doesn't draw. Well, actually, technically draws off course of portal, doesn't draw for a draw step, because Leovold works just as you can't draw more than one card each turn. Activating Dak Faden now just doesn't do anything. Actually, if if he wants to plus one Dak, he's gonna have to either target me, which draws me a card off Leovold, or uh, target himself and discard two cards. So that is funny. All right, Kaito down, and what is this? Oh, we drew Underman Adventure. Okay. So I need to draw Dismember. I guess is what you're saying. That was his draw, huh? All right. I also need to get the, oh, he's get to play Murderous Rider, too. Unfortunate. Oh, this Wind Orb is now really getting me, the way this game turned out. Basically, he played an additional two pieces of artifact mana and killed by Urza. The combination of those things was pretty bad. If the Scavenging Ooze wasn't out, I would have probably got bribery for Scarab God and just tried to bring back Urza, because I would have been able to next turn. Oh, he's going to Dak, just discard a land to get it, plus one loyalty. Yeah, that is reasonable. Oh, he didn't play the Murderous Rider. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mana Leak could be good, actually, but let's brainstorm. I really want to find Dismember. Oh, Kaito actually works pretty nicely, too. What to do, what to do. So, well, let's see. Kaito the Underman Adventure, attack with Leovold. Get get the initiative. I might not be able to. The problem is if I don't steal the initiative this turn, I'm never going to, but then he's just going to take it back immediately. Oh, I'm probably not going to win this. Because I can't bounce Leo to get an extra Kaito activation. That's not a good idea. Um, Let's see. If I get the initiative, then what? What does that accomplish? Kaito's sitting there on four. This can't attack. I guess he can make this a 3-3. Three, three. He can't kill Kaito without getting... He can't take the initiative back if he does that. So then I start with the initiative. All right, let's put back two lands. I guess I can actually put back Puda Delta because I'm going to get a shuffle off the initiative. All right. Okay, that can't block. initiative get a shuffle yeah let's go ahead and get island I guess need to find time walk ASAP all right uh, it's gonna only draw one here I voted for Carnage. <laughs> I would take that. Uh, yeah, has access to a lot of mana because this taps for mana too. So what do you want to do? Kill the Planeswalker or get the initiative? If I initiative next turn, I get to Lost Well probably. I don't think I'm forging. Okay, so we're killing Kaito. Very reasonable play, I would say. Oh, nope, we're taking the initiative back, okay. Also reasonable. Mm, sure. Eating Kaido Shizuki doesn't do anything. Why are we tapping all our creatures? All right, well that, that's a little dubious to tap this many creatures. Like you tapped the both mana dorks when we're battling over the initiative. That is kind of interesting. Did he think that this was going to grow off permanence? Kind of implies that he did, which that's not how it works. So maybe, just maybe. So you're saying there's a chance. All right. He gets the initiative. He gets to get two plus one plus one counters on a creature or scry two. Don't really care too much. Fortunately, he's going to get to take our talisman with Dak, but I do get to draw a card off that. What, I need to find time walk very quickly. I guess you got to put the plus one plus one counters on like the bird probably. 
Sylvan carry it did. Okay. I mean, I guess it's a good blocker now. Okay, draw a card. It's not a time walk. Oh, he needed to steal that first, and then his construct would have been big. That could have done both. I missed that, but luckily so did my opponent. All right. And he's going to play a murderous rider. All right. Oh. Into what else? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I am going to lose this game. I'm liking Win Orb a little less with this many mana dorks around. Oh, man, that's like so close to being good. Take back the initiative, but it really doesn't do much. And then I'm facing lethal. All right, all right. I think I, I'll give up this one. The problem is the Winter Orb messed me up. The time walk wasn't even enough to get out of it. Uh, do I want to take out Winter Orb? I still don't think I do. Mm, do I want Ether Channeler? He does have a lot of ways to kill Urza. Makes me a little less prone to want it. Yeah. Sort of fires. Maybe I just put the more consistent Ether Channeler because my deck's card quality is pretty absurd. All right. Game three on the play. Okay, I'll keep this hand. I do need to draw a land at some point here, but turn one Talisman into turn two Mana Leak is pretty nice. Also, Force of Negation is fantastic against him, and Bribery is pretty good too. Also, any land, this is turn two Kaito Dancing Shadow. Come on, land, 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 land. Well, almost any land. <laughs> That's the one tap land in the deck, but I'm not complaining because I still just get to mana leak this turn and then play Kaito next turn, which is still fantastic. Uh, yeah, we're going to mana leak. Yeah, we're going to take a, <laughs> the most damage I've ever taken to cast a mana leak, probably. Oh, I got to watch out for days. Can't get, I did play around days unintentionally there. Yeah, let's play around days here. Kaito, Let's just draw a card. Ooh, a vamp. Wow, we're really speed running our life total here, but I think that's totally fine. Let's see, steam vents. This is like a DAC or something. Yeah, we're not. We're probably going to counter DAC. Uh, Just do that. Let's take three more damage. So I didn't get dazed. Uh, do I want ancestral or something else? No, I just want ancestral. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start by kaitoing. What a weird game. <laughs> I'm already at 10. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start by drawing a card here. Yeah, because if I drew a land, I was going to bribery here. Um, knowing, okay, day, I don't have to play around days. Minsk and Boo still in the deck. So is Fractured Identity. Time Raveler. Leobold, Scarab God. I'm just going to get Underman Adventure, probably. Does he have like Murderous Rider in hand? Coercive, no, not Coercive Portal. No, yes. I, I, you know what? I don't know all the cards that are in his deck, and I don't really care that much. Let's just do this. Just get an island. Go to seven ancestral myself. Pass the turn. All right. Well, I'm not going to have to tap that ancient tomb anymore this game, probably. Though Knight's Whisper was not exactly the draw I was hoping for. Thought sees. Oh, that's kind of annoying because the Orcish Bowmasters was about to be really good. But, oh, he doesn't have another play. Okay. Uh, let's just scry two. Bottom. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep either channel or on top. I think that one's totally fine. This has Vigilance, right? Send. Let's not bounce with Kaito. Draw. Mm, I don't really 
really see a big reason to play Knight's Whisper. Let's play Ether Channeler. Create a 1-1. One, one. Pass the turn. The only play was Thoughtseize last turn. Weird. And next turn we get to go into the stash. Make a treasure. And then we have Dismember up. Going to 5 here. Vraska, okay. I guess you kind of have to kill the either channel or... Oh, no, the bird token. Okay. Mm, stash, make a treasure. I mean, this is just not a very close game. Um, let's draw a card. Let's see, attack Vraska. No, I'm just going to attack him. I, I don't care about Vraska. He can sack a permanent to draw a card. Yeah, let's bounce Ether Channeler. Do I want to draw a card here? I guess Fracture Identity is the kind of card I'm kind of worried about. Let's just draw a card. Okay, now we can Spell Seeker for Time Walk. Wait, hold on. And that obviously is just going to end the game here. Time Walk. Land. I mean, if I get days, so be it. Grave Titan, and then yeah, take our time off turn. <laughs> All right. And that is that. We pulled out a 2-1. Close games. Went to game three in every match. You know, despite this deck being really busted, other people had great decks too. Abram's deck was very good, and his curves were definitely good enough to beat me. So uh, hopefully my team wins. We're up a good amount, so I figure we're probably okay. Oh, yeah. Dan went 3-0. Um, so... I think either way we're just doing just fine here. So I went 2-1. Um, take a look at this deck. I mean, this deck was great. Re really, the only complaint I had is I don't have no mocks, but I mean, come on, how greedy can you get? You have Ancestral and Time Walk. Force of Will would have also helped, I guess. I had Grief and Force Negation, though. No, this deck was basic, very close to perfect. Like, you can't ask for much more than that. So... Looks like we are victorious. We sure did win. And uh, at this point, I guess that's the draft. Uh, as always, thanks for hanging out here. This was a cool draft. Uh, we managed to win this one. Nice 2-1. A disappointing 2-1. This deck, I expect to have more than two wins on average per draft. I would say it's not obviously like a favorite to 3-0 because it's still hard to do that. But I would say it... Well, maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's like... Like going in, I think I, I I'm good for usually about two out of three. Two, go going two one a good amount of the time. I think that's like two thirds is you know sixty six percent. It's pretty close to what my winner percentage has been in these. This one might be a little bit higher because this one's just so good. In any case, uh, thanks for hanging out. There will be more, and uh, I really like the eight player drafts. Those are fun. We'll try to arrange more of those. Thanks for watching. Another video up tomorrow, and until then, uh, may you open ancestral time walk and something else. <laughs> I'll see you then. Wait. Previous me totally just lied. We get a bonus round. The draft is over. We have one. And the way the four on fours work, you only play three of the four opponents. But me and Salvato, Luis Salvato, we, we both wanted to play another round. So we are playing a fourth round just for fun because we enjoy playing magic. That is kind of how it works. Uh, I'm going to keep this hand. This hand has, well, the potential for explosive stuff with vamp and time walk. So probably vamp ancestral, that sort of thing. And uh, we'll see how this goes. He's playing like a green, black, red, like a Jund Sneak Reanimate channel deck. So he's got some cool stuff going on too. And ooh, turn one, Imperial Seal. Uh-oh, scary. Well, I hope I draw Force of Negation, I guess. I can't do anything. If he's got turn two channel Emrakul, then so be it. Okay, did not channel Emrakul me. Kind of want to just vamp. Is it crazy to vamp for force of negation? I actually don't think it is. I'm gonna vamp for force of negation. I would never do this without knowing the cards in his deck. But this is this is round four of a team draft. We both kind of know what each other's playing. So let's do that. And then I can go land. Turn two time walk. Turn three Kaito Shizuki. Make a ninja. 
I was hoping to draw blue card for the turn because I didn't really want to pitch Kaido Dancing Shadow, but Kaido Shizuki drawing me an extra card every turn is going to add up pretty quickly. And if I don't have to use Force this turn, that obviously is a lot nicer. Oath of Druids. All right, I will force that. Can't really have that one in play. Let's attack. And draw. Yeah, I actually think I'm supposed to win orb here. He could just play sneak attack next turn. And I think winter orbing, as painful as it is when I don't have anything to combo with it, I think is worth it. Oh, that's annoying. All right, I guess I'm just going to have to plus one Kaito to start with here. Not bad. Draw a card. Uh huh. Orcish Bowmaster's land. Let's just pass here. And probably, because I'm just going to play an end of turn Bowmaster's and see how well that works. Him to Taraka. Uh -huh. All right, that is fine. I guess I'm glad I didn't spell seeker for Winter Orb or anything like that. All right, let's untap my land. Oh, there's Urza. All right, so let's attack for two. And if I draw a land off Kaito, not quite. Uh, it would be really good. This is still very good, though, because Winter Orb is now about to be just a complete free roll for me. And it's still punishing him. I mean, he didn't play, play a land the last few turns, but it has kept him on low amounts of lands. Let's untap that, draw. All right, Spider Bluff's not even bad, even though I have Winter Orb in play, because I have Urza that I'm about to do. Oh, interesting. Um, let's get Swamp. Actually, I said nine. I actually think I alt cast Grief here. Dam, Gristlebrand, Sneak, Woodfall Prime. Yeah, okay, I'll take Sneak. Play Urza. Land, and then he could cast Dam, but that's not really going to do much here. All right, well, that was good. Do I want Ether Channel or Sword of Fire? Nice. I definitely want Winter Orb still. Oh, I definitely want Braids. This is actually the matchup for Braids. Dismember, I don't think is even great. Which is kind of sad, but and do definitely want bribery. Crave Titan also seems a little suspect. Like I think I'd rather just have like an Ether Channel, just a cheaper card. I don't think the oh I guess he has some reanimate stuff. Yeah, let's just play the Graveyard Trespasser then. All right, a little bonus round action here. You get to listen to double sign offs here. Um, sure. It's not the best hand, but I mean, come on. I can't mulligan a turn three grief here. It, oh, well, that's nice. All right. That makes my hand better, as it turns out. I guess I'm going to have to discard still. If you had played a green source turn one, there is the argument to turn one ancestral and maybe grief him. But I think the way things are now, I don't need to do that. Um, I also do know that Ely has the... Red Blast, so this Ancestral can't be countered. Okay, Imperial Seal. So do I want to Grief next turn or do I want to wait till he draws what he seals for? I guess his deck's full of like two card combos, so Griefing, uh, oh, well, I was gonna say Griefing could be good. I guess I have to discard anyway here. Yeah, let's just grief. I ended up not really getting uh, that many any grief combos. Oh, there's Mana Crypt, Faithless Looting. I definitely don't want to discard Yona. I, know, I guess I discard the Mana Crypt because looting, I can't, uh, making discarding it doesn't accomplish anything. So with Foothills Pass, draw. Yeah, I am going to win this game. Actually, do I even play the Urza? Don't think I do. I don't even think I brainstorm either. I want to just leave up Mana Leak, and because bribery for Emrakul is gonna just basically end the game. 
So if I can mana leak this turn instead of using force negation, that's a lot better. And I didn't want to brainstorm because there's nothing I want to brainstorm into. And if he casts a him to Turok, I guess I'm going to mana leak it anyway. I was considering brainstorming to hide cards from him, but I guess mana leak is just a better version of that. Yeah. Mana leak. And since I have my land drop, I don't need to do anything else. And then bribery with force of negation up. Pretty good draws, I would say. My matchup against Salvato, I think, is pretty good. Obviously, he could always channel me. But uh, I'm just going to get the Emrakul. I, I don't even know if that's the right one to get. But that's the one I wanted to get. <laughs> and ilya has got the Caracas, so I'm safe there, too. I guess this one's actually better against, like, Metamorph or something. Force negation at the ready. This Ragavan. I would splash the Ragavan again. It just didn't really work out. So, so for for that to do anything. Ooh, he's going to Demonic Tutor. Oh, is he going to be able to like... Looting, discard Coma. Reanimate Coma. I mean, I've got the Force Negation, but I want to see him try. I guess this could go wrong if... Like, if he had more mana and, and DT'd for, like, a Zealous Conscripts, that could be a lot scarier. All right, looting. Hmm, maybe I should have just Force Negationed it so that he didn't... So he could see that I had the Force of Negation. Just because that, that would be pretty sweet. Oh, it looks like he's going to cast something. Animate Dead the Grief. <laughs> uh, force of Negation you. Just because. And there we go. All right, quick bonus round, and uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out. This was fun. I figured might as well get you some. This is effectively a, a video sign-off if you listen to LR. That's basically what that was. And uh, I'll be back soon. See you next time.